It's your Locked On Flyers podcast for Tuesday, November 8th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content that is really thinking the the phantoms are on the upswing now. I think we're starting to get there, Russ. It's close. All right. We're going to do that and preview tonight's matchup against the St. Louis Blues on today's show. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, once again, I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here, as always, with the brilliant Russ Cohen, who's on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. That's where we post about our episodes and Flyers news. You can also email the show at LockdownFlyers at Gmail. We've got a mailbag on tomorrow's show, so get those questions in now. We are absolutely going to be talking about the Lehigh Valley Phantoms today, plus a little bit of interesting Flyers news that we got from practice yesterday. Locked on Flyers is free and available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you are listening right now. So hit that subscribe button. You'll get all of our episodes here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Plus, we're over on YouTube. If you want to see our smiling faces, we're over there as well. Russ, we were questioning why Rasmus Ristolainen was out of the lineup against Ottawa. He was a healthy scratch, Mm -hmm. uh, according to what we learned at practice yesterday. And uh, based on how things went, they were kind of cycling the lines around or the defensive pairs around a little bit. So it's not 100%, but it seems like Risto is going to be back in the lineup. I don't know. Then on St. Crochetti's, you know, video, they asked John point blank. Does that mean we could expect him in the lineup? And he's like, I'm not saying that. So it, you know, here's the problem. The problem is, and we talked about this. We didn't know who was going to be good with John's system, who wasn't going to be good. There were always going to be players that weren't going to be good with it. We did point out that early on, you know, Risto was having trouble with it. So here's the issue. We did talk about, that Risto's salary is not outrageous for what he's making compared to other defensemen. But that is also, true. We also pointed out that Chuck Fletcher signed him without knowing what the coach or style of play was going to be when they signed him. Well, now that's sort of the rubber's meeting the road on there. And so far it's not it's not looking good. There's not there's no traction. So Risto has to, you know, conform to torts. There's no way around it. And I don't think he ever does anything quickly it's just not in his nature and and it's not to say that you know he's not a good player or a smart player or anything it's just when i've seen him have to change it always seems to be incrementally and for john it doesn't seem to be fast enough right the one thing we could probably all agree on is players don't get that long of a chance to impress the coach if they don't do certain things right away he's more apt to say i'll win without you and so this is now a worry. Like, I don't know what's going to happen with Rasmus Ristolainen in long term this season. But if you don't play him, it hurts his trading value. Now, it's not necessarily up to the coach to worry about that. But again, if you want to talk about long term cap for this team, it's a worry. Yeah, I think that's a good point about, you know, potential trade value down the pike. But I do also want to talk about kind of the quick pulling guys out of games and uh, I think that or benching guys like we've seen that that it doesn't take much right there's very clear Mm -hmm. evidence in terms of some of the forwards some of the young guys Risto that he does pull the trigger pretty quickly and so I think that you know this is oil and water again I've I've said that before with Torts and, and some guys on this team and I think that we have to be a little patient on our end, even if Tortorella isn't in terms Correct. of allowing Risto the room to at least improve enough to fit in the system and, and play a role. Will he eventually? I don't know. I think we're both kind of the jury is still out 
on that. But I think, you know, as long as we can give him a little bit more leeway here, given what we know about him that you talked about, uh, I think that's the important part. Yeah, there's talent there. I'm going to give him the leeway. It's just if it's not going to be, you know, Sandheim and Ristolainen like we thought, I don't know. Is it going to be Seal or Ristolainen? Is Ristolainen going to be a third pairing defenseman? Like, you know, if he's a third pairing defenseman, you you definitely have failed on the salary cap end of it. That wasn't the plan. So this will be interesting to watch. Yeah, I'm slightly less concerned. I know this sounds weird about the salary cap end of it in terms of value versus mm-hmm. out- output and where they are in the lineup because this whole season is about experimentation. So uh, I'm slightly less focused on that. But I-, I do think it's something to watch. And is is Risto really going to get the chance that he deserves to get better? So in addition to that, uh, we saw Patrick Brown and... Anisimov uh, at regular practice. So mm-hmm. that's kind of another thing we've been watching in terms of Anisimov because the Flyers would have to get rid of a contract in order to formally sign him. We'll, we'll watch for that. And uh, another thing at practice was that uh, some of the young players were working with Angelo Ricci before practice. So hopefully that helps get them some of the confidence they need or helps fixes some of the little things that Torts is looking for to get them more consistent ice time in the line. Yeah. I was happy to see that. I, I thought that was good with Angela working with them. That's, that's a positive. And um, yeah, I do hope that that, that does cure some ills, those kinds of things. You got to kind of have to drum those in early in the season. If you want it to kind of go right during the regular, you know, the whole f- breath of the regular season, I think that's really important. Uh, I think so, too. Uh, moving toward the matchup against the St. Louis Blues. Man, the Blues are a mess right now. A <laughs> really flaming that, fire. Yeah, uh, I think I was being generous there by saying just a mess. But uh, six-game losing streak. They had started with three wins for the season. Uh, they have lost to, I would say, a couple of good teams and mostly mediocre to bad teams in the Isles, Kings, Habs, Preds, Oilers, and Jets. Uh, they are facing the Bruins, or they did face the Bruins last night. We don't know the outcome of that game, but if they lose it in regulation, that would be a team record for uh, consecutive losses in regulation. Yeah, you never want that mark of futility and and Craig Berube definitely doesn't want that coming into Philly. He knows so many people here, has a lot of friends here. I'm sure he wouldn't feel great about it. Uh, He'll light a fire under him um, for this game, no matter what. Yeah, according to uh, Blues GM Doug Armstrong, he is not on the hot seat right now, but GMs say what they're going to say. No, I do believe Armstrong. He's sort of a pretty straight shooter. I, I agree. I believe in it. All right. Uh, I think with the Blues right now, uh, they're just their problem is consistency, and it's something yeah. we've talked about, you know, with the Flyers from time to time is not being able to put together complete games. Uh, they're struggling in their own zone, uh, so you know there's some f- familiarity to what the Blues are going through right now. Yeah, they they've got some blue line issues, and, and I think Petrangelo got cheap shotted the other day, which doesn't help, but. But their blue line's not as strong as it used to be. It's a little smaller. It's a little um, um, not as good defensively while it still has the offensive talent. So, And I'm not blaming it all on Tory Krug. I'm just saying it's just kind of worked out that way right. over time here. Uh, you know, Colton Pareko can only do so much. They, they're lacking a little bit there. And so they've got to have the offense and the special teams to sort of make it up. And binnington has been okay. Like, that's it. He's just been okay. And so, you know, he, it's kind of been proven in the past that if they're going to go anywhere, he kind of has to get on fire too. And, you know, he has, you know, mouthed off in recent games and you thought maybe that would help him. It didn't. So, you know, this is a good time for the Flyers to catch him, I think. Well, Bennington was in net last night, so we could be seeing Thomas Grice, who is 0-2 so far. Uh, he did check into a third game in relief once, but yeah, I, I think we'll probably see Grice. Given, yeah, that's probably the case. Given everything, but you know, you mentioned their offensive woes, and Ryan O'Reilly is off to a super weak start. He only has one goal so far, yeah. and that's been a big point of discussion about the Blues so far. 
Well, he's busy doing commercials with Pat Maroon and Ric Flair. Maybe that's part <laughs> of it. Uh, no, I'm kidding. But no, Ryan O'Reilly is a big part of that team. And yeah, he definitely has to get going. I, I don't know what it is. I haven't watched him enough to figure out why they don't have the offensive mojo, but they certainly have enough players. It's not like they're lacking talent. You know, they, they re-signed some players. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, Robert Thomas should be doing good. Uh, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure what their problem is. Yeah, Justin Falk is the leading scorer on the team. Yeah, uh, that's bad. Got, that's bad when you have a defenseman as your top point getter on the team so far. And uh, yeah, I mean, they are looking to get back on the horse, so to speak. Maybe they got that off their backs last night and the Flyers have less to worry about in terms of a Craig Berube revenge tour. But uh, I think that, you know, in order to win this one, they really have to pounce on any sloppy play that St. Louis has. I, I think that will be the key to the game in terms of capitalizing on weaker moments. Yeah, again, St. Louis will oblige if, if you want to fight with them. So I don't think the Flyers are going to have any kind of um, edge that way in, in that game, you know, in that part of the game. So I think that's important. Uh, yeah, I'm looking down the list here. You know, Braden Shen always kills the Flyers. You do have to watch out for him. That is and, true. <laughs> you know, Kairou's off to a slow start too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just all their guys are really off to slow starts. But, yeah, you do wonder about the familiarity of someone like Braden Shen. He always seems to be in that slot area open at some point. So if I'm the Flyers, I'm focusing on that too. Absolutely. All right, uh, it is time for Phantoms Tuesday, and we will talk about that coming up next. But today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net, your number one source for betting football and the start of the new basketball season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in depth analysis on every game. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including the NBA, MMA, boxing, and golf, and of course, the NHL. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. The season is in full swing, and so is Locked On's game to game NHL. It's every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On game to game covers every game from across the NHL with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow game to game on the Locked On NHL channel, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Russ, we saw an improved Phantoms team this past weekend. Even though they were one and one for the two games, I was still pretty impressed with their play overall. Uh, going into the weekend, we learned that Troy Grosnick had a little bit of an injury, so they called Pat Nagel uh, back up as a as a backup netminder. Uh, Evan Barrett, who we got in the trade from Chicago, made his debut on Saturday. And then Ryan Fitzgerald, who had been hurt, played on uh, over the weekend for his season debut as well. He played on Friday. And uh, I think the Belleville game was interesting because for many reasons, and we'll get into it, but mm -hmm. Chuck Fletcher was at that game uh, because of the close proximity to Ottawa while the Flyers were there. And I think the guys knew that and uh, played at a certain level and with a certain degree of passion to reflect that. Well, I mean, uh, you know, the bosses, you know, there, you, you definitely should do that. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, uh, it was good to see Cam York back mm -hmm. and uh, that his injury, there wasn't anything really to worry about. Uh, because of the Grosnick injury, Sam Erson played both games and got his first win out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the the Phantoms did lose to Belleville, uh, but there were some really good takeaways from that game on Friday and then one against Laval in OT. Also some good takeaways from that as well. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, the, um, you know, the overall team speed looks pretty good because I've been watching uh, and breaking down certain guys. And, and so I like that. 
I feel like their um, blue liners are pretty good in the sense that they could take the puck out and such. Although I saw Kevin Connaughton on the second power play. I was like, eh, I'm not sure why that happened. Maybe it was just the way that rotation worked out. I was kind of hoping that would be like a Wyatt Wiley thing at this point. Um, But I saw some guys skating really well. I, the only thing I I'll admit that I don't love is on their power play. I don't love their breakout. I don't. And we'll get into that more later with one of the players that I chose, but I feel like that's still sort of sketchy. Yeah, I can see that. I think the breakout is weaker than the setup. Like once they get set up, they've actually Correct. got the puck movement going much, much better yeah. than they were earlier in the season. I would say especially so on Saturday. I was really impressed. And I would say that Connaughton was probably only on that power play unit uh, on Saturday because Wiley was scratched in mm-hmm. that game. Mm-hmm. So they uh, were kind of rotating guys in and out and that's just the way it fell but uh, I would say one of the things we talked about in previous weeks about the phantoms is that they just weren't shooting enough for the most part and boy did they take our advice because they got 39 shots on goal in each of the two games and the effort was there the effort was absolutely there they ran into some really good goaltending in both games I think and so uh, you know even though they weren't perfect. And again, you know, they lost that first game. I would say I was suitably impressed with the progress made. Yeah. I think it was the second game they had to run into Mad Sogard, a really big um, Mm -hmm. goalie who I liked a lot in the draft and seems like he is developing. So you're right. They did face some good goaltending. They faced some fast teams. They faced some old foes. Um, Guys, that always did. The guys that used to be a part of them and always do well against them, it seems. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, I kind of want to make one on one sound great. And I don't want to make it sound bad either. I think it was good. I think overall it was yeah. good, but I still want to see more of an uptick with them. Yeah, I think uh, the game against Belleville. Uh, of course, we uh, saw Ridley Gregg, who we've talked about on this oh, show. Yeah. Before. He's really he had a good. Really, he had a really good game for, for Belleville. I was I was very impressed with him and kind of sad that there was like no way to make it work to have him come over to the Flyers organization. But it it was a slugfest. Uh, there were seven power plays for each team, tons of penalties. There was fisticuffs. Uh, the most bizarre thing I ever saw was there was a game misconduct on Scott Sabarin of, of Belleville. Uh, he was just fighting with Garrett Wilson, who was facing the other way up against the bench and like couldn't punch back. So the, it, we got like a seven minute power play. Oh, I, I guess because it's a defenseless player. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and and then of course Belleville scored shorthanded on that seven minute power play, and the <laughs> Phantoms course. got nothing out of it. But you know, uh, small victories there. Uh, and I, I will say that they really came back in this one in a good mm-hmm. way. They were down three to nothing in this mm-hmm. game. The Phantoms were and wound up losing three to two. Uh, and you know really good contributions from everybody to try and and get one in this game. Max Wilman probably had the most passion I've seen from him in a long time. Uh, he was upset with a call uh, that he should have been upset about. It was terrible. And he threw his equipment and got a 10 at yeah, the end of the first uh, game. But again, the passion levels were high. Is it because of Chuck Fletcher? I don't know. But uh, it was a, a, a very scrappy game. Yeah, I saw some good play out of Garrett Wilson for sure. Um, mm-hmm. You know, some spirited play, and and that's good too. And then on Saturday, uh, we had a homecoming game for Elliot Denoye. So he mm-hmm. had lots of people in the crowd. Man, he was trying so hard to get something yeah. in this one. Uh, poor guy couldn't do it, but uh, I think that. The effort was definitely there, and it was a lot of fun to watch. You mentioned old friends. Danik Martell always plays well he does. against the, the Phantoms. He's fast. But, He's still fast. Yeah, he really is. Uh, but again, I was impressed. The Phantoms were two for three on the power play and a perfect two for two on the penalty kill. So you, you can't ask for much more. They 
uh, stayed out of the box pretty much and uh, and were successful on the power play. Yeah, I feel like Tyson Forrester, while he does have five goals and I think it's leading the club, I th- think he needs to vary his shot a little. It seems like it's the same shot that I'm seeing with not much change in the angle. And, and I think that's something where when he moves up to the next level, you got a great shot, but so do a hundred other guys in the NHL. Like you gotta, gotta make it, you know, a little bit different. Like it was in, in juniors where it was going in all the time. I get the goaltending's better, but now you have to sort of like get that better too. Well, his playmaking, I think, is improving yes. as well, uh, especially on the overtime winner uh, on a fabulous sequence with him and Cal O'Reilly and Cam York. Oh, I'm who, sorry. I see. I, I made a mistake with Forrester. I, I thought he had five goals. I see it's five assists. So my bad. He needs more goals. Yes, he does. Uh, that's why I mentioned the playmaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Uh, Yeah, Cam York had an incredible overtime winner. We're going to talk a little bit more about that at the end of the show because it featured uh, an incredible sequence of events that happened afterwards. But we are going to talk more about the Phantoms weekend and focus in on some individual players coming up next. Today's episode is also brought to you by Simply Safe. Did you know that over the holidays, property crimes like burglaries and package thefts spike nationally? That's why our friends at Simply Safe Home Security are offering 50% off their award winning security system so that more families can feel safe and secure this holiday season. Order your Simply Safe system for half off today and enjoy advanced security and greater peace of mind this holiday season. Simply Safe's advanced technology is what I love the most. I control the system from my phone with the app. I can watch an HD live stream from the security cameras, or I can make sure that the wide variety of sensors in every room are working. In an emergency, 24-7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get priority police response. Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL today. This is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Russ, we were talking about Cam York back in the lineup for the weekend. And uh, I think we had some good moments from a lot of the individual players this weekend. I want to start off with Ali Lixel scored in both games over the weekend. Uh, his power play goal on Friday, he just skated through Belleville and blasted one in. Uh, he's got two goals, four assists in seven games played so far. Yeah, I really like his play. I mean, he's skating well. He's got confidence. I like the uh, the way he was presenting his stick and open on the two-on-one. I like the way, like you said, that he picked the top corner on the power play for the wrist shot goal. Those look good. Uh, I, he, you can see he's smart out there. He knows how to get open. He knows when to get open. You know, it. it, it I'm still scratching my head because I know at the NHL level, the coach is talking about looking for goals, looking – different places to get goals. I think this is a guy who could score goals, but you're going to have to give him power play time to do it. I mean, that's the whole thing. I mean, unless you're, if you're not willing to give him power play time, you're not going to get these goals. And that's to me, that is the, uh, the fundamental thing with them. Cause I think, I think his play at five on five is good enough, but I do think like if you threw him on a second power play, he could get some points for you, even at the NHL level. I think so too. And that's where I think just Ali looks a little being consistent. And capitalizing when he can is going to serve him well in the long run. That he's near the top of the food chain here, but he has to stay there for the Phantoms in order to get that call up because these opportunities are going to be fewer and far between with Torts and and what he's thinking right now. So, uh, again, that would just be my recommendation for him is to stay consistent and keep putting points on the board here. It sounds simple, but it's not always easy. Yeah, it's not. 
Uh, Elliot Denoye, uh, three goals, two assists in nine games played so far. Again, had a really good weekend, especially Saturday, like I said, trying everything to put one in in front of his friends and family. But I think he's making plays. Uh, he's he's getting a lot of opportunities. And again, just was one of the guys that really ran into the goaltending. Yeah, he um, he's doing a lot of things right. I think his defensive awareness is way better than uh, in his draft year and even last year. He's really covering guys. He, he may, he's never going to be physical, but I, I liked how he was cutting them off um, with his skating to, to basically push him to the outside and get the puck that way. That's fine. His stick is active. He's, he's covering the middle at times when he needs to um, in the defensive zone. Those are all good things. I also like the fact that um, you know his skating is always great. What I don't like is when he's skating into the offensive zone, a lot of times he passes the puck and he never gets it back. And and so that's something where because he's he's pretty, you know, unselfish. And I, I think he's always trying to, you know, get plays going. And sometimes players there lose the puck and and it kind of loses the uh the momentum there a little bit. On the breakout, I think he is getting um marginalized because I, you know, I saw at times where like the only place he could go on the breakout because he's not allowed to carry the puck is way to the outside. And he's getting pushed on the wall. Like there's no room for him. And, you know, is at the AHL level, am I really worried about if Kevin Connaughton or someone like that's bringing out the puck? Or do I want to let a guy who's got legit talent do it once in a while? We saw when, you know, the Flyers were allowing Frost to do it preseason, how that was working. And then that all went away. You could do the same thing with Denoye. He's really good with open eyes. Yeah, I I wonder if that's a coaching thing in terms of the set Seems plays like that it. they've put together. I think on both of those points, Russ, that uh, if he is in a situation where they're telling him to dish it off when he crosses the blue line, yeah, that could be part of it. But uh, there is something to be said for being selfish every now and again and just holding sure. on to the puck. So maybe he can start making some of those choices and Hopefully. and win and win the respect uh, to be able to get those assignments adjusted from the coaches. Yeah. yeah, that would be good. I'd be happy for him if he could do that. Yeah, and then uh, Ronnie Adderd, again, I, I feel similarly about him as I do to Ali Lixel, that he just has mm -hmm. to stay consistent. He's getting all kind of minutes, so there's going to be film on him at five on yeah. five, PK, yeah. and power play. So for whatever thing the Flyers need, there's some really good plays from him on all accounts. And so, again, just stay consistent, Roddy, and – you know, keep getting those assists and, and shooting the puck when you're quarterbacking the power play and you'll be good. Yeah. Let's see where he is at the 25 game mark. That's what I would like mm -hmm. to see. Yeah. I, I want to talk about uh, a couple of guys that we don't normally uh, touch on as much on the show because they're a little bit lower on the pecking order, but Max Willman, I think, I feel like he and Hayden Hodgson have sort of inverted where Hayden Hodgson was kind of the shiny was former mm -hmm. ECHL player and, you know, made the Flyers roster opening day. But Hodgson is just struggling right now. I think getting sent down was I really think that's what it is. psychologically difficult for him. And Max Willman yep. is like, I'm going to fight for this now. Uh, on Friday, Willman had two shorthanded attempts that, again, were just stopped by really good goaltending. He yeah. worked really hard all game, six shots on goal, which was the highest on the team on Friday as well. And I, th I just thought he had a really good weekend overall with really good battles, passion, and, and was trying to make plays happen. He could, he could get things to happen, but he also has to finish. Like that's the biggest thing with Max Willman. I'm still looking for that finish out of him. Yeah. Uh, heading over to goaltending, uh, Urson played both, I think played mostly good. I think on Friday, maybe he would want one of those goals back. But it's uh, a tough back to back because he hasn't played it a is. lot this year. It is. So he was the second star of the game on Saturday, 35 saves on 37 shots, made a ton of key saves against Laval. So a good weekend overall for Sam Urson, which is a good sign. Yeah, no, it's a good sign. I'm I'm happy with his progress. I'm glad he's healthy. I, I can't bitch about the back to back. I can't bitch about his performance because you know, he back to back this early in the season when he's been injured, hasn't played a lot. It's still pretty damn good. Absolutely. 
Uh, the Phantoms have two games this weekend at home. They're playing Springfield. And then on uh, Saturday, they're going to face Laval again. So that should be a little scrappy since they're yep. playing so close to each other. Uh, we teased the Cam York overtime winner. And this was like one of the most fun baller moves from Cam York, where he, after he scored that overtime winner, he just literally skated by the penalty box, waved at the Laval guy in the box and walked off the ice down yeah. the tunnel. And like half the team just followed him right down there. Like it's like that walk off home run in baseball. That's what they did. Mm -hmm. It was like a walk off goal. I love it. it. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of it fun. Was. So uh, make sure you check out the video. If you haven't seen it linked in the show notes, that'll do it for today's show. A lot of content today. We'll be back again tomorrow to recap the game against the blues plus answer your mailbag questions. So if you got those, send them along. You can tweet us at locked on flyers. You can email us at locked on flyers at Gmail or you can comment over on YouTube. Once again, I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at rmiriam. That's R-M-I-R-I-A-M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. Thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. It's the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available wherever you get your podcasts. Have a great day, everyone.